she brought a lot of that knowledge to Tayyar Borigua, the Puerto Rican French activist from East Harlem, um, and was one of the key figures teaching other students uh, printmaking. And in fact, the series from her prints became the inspiration for the mosaic that she created for the MTA in the East Harlem train station, uh, 103rd Street on the Sixth Line. So if you, next time you come to the museum, make sure you look for that. Of distilling 
an already made image down into different layers um, has been very interesting. So you know, now when I go back into my studio, it's a much more of a, um, I would say like a concentrated way of thinking, a deliberate way of thinking, a methodical way of thinking, where in, when I'm making a painting or drawing, I'm thinking you know, in an almost more intuitive sense. Um, so what that's given me, going back into my studio, is also this much more methodical sense of, oh, you know, now I can think in reverse, or what about if I'm going to make a painting or an installation, how many, how many layers are in this installation, right? Can I remove one of those layers and make that into an installation? Can I move that, you know, can I, you know, can I move things around? It's kind of distilled and broken down, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of different layers. Um, where I think before going in, you know, I, I would make a painting and there'd be 20 or 500 layers. And, you know, I would never question that. But going into a print shop, like especially last year, you know, with the, in Ontario, I had to think like, oh, well, you know, I, I can't do a 70 layer. <laughs> Although I wanted to, by the way, but uh, you know, a 70 layer <coughs> uh, print, you know, what is kind of essential in work and breaking it down. So I think that reverse back and forth um, of working intuitively and methodically and back has really kind of affected, um, you know, what I'm doing. And so again, I just want to say um, thank you. Hi, my name is Teresa Kenyakovic, and I also want to thank you for being here on such a challenging day. And I'd like to thank Caitlin for the good regards, and um, I can see why I'm here this great panel. Um, I am originally from Belgrade, which was in former Yugoslavia, currently named Serbia. And that's how, that's where I came upon printmaking in art school, similar to you. Uh, it was a very traditional school in, in those days, I'm talking about early 80s, divided into four strict departments, printmaking, painting, sculpture, drawing, I think. Um, you had to select your major from year one, and um, over the course of the first couple of years, we got more and more exposure to printmaking, and I just loved it, and I loved it so much that I actually changed my major from painting to printmaking. Um, and that's probably all that I was doing as an artist was making prints or drawings. Um, I was done with my uh, graduate course for Phi 91, and I was kind of like waiting and making work for my thesis exhibition and decided to come spend some time in New York because my then boyfriend was uh, um, in graduate school at the new school here in New York. So I just came in, spent time going through galleries and New York Public Library was a great resource, um, still is, and started to feel like I needed a studio. I did not have a studio. We were sharing a very small apartment with a uh, roommate, and heard from friends about this place called the Lower East Side Print Shop, where you could trade your labor and time for some free studio hours. So I went there. It was on a very decrepit, abandoned block on East 4th Street walked up the, the stairs where the paint was peeling off and falling down on you and it was all graffiti, you couldn't see the paint. And this door opened on the sixth floor and it was drenched in sun and beautiful and there were people working quietly. Um, and I just fell in love with it right away. And I thought, why didn't anybody in my town, in my country, think of the shared studio facilities where people just come and do work instead of everybody buying their own presses and setting up their asses and you know, poisoning themselves with these things, uh, where there could be places like this where you can affordably make work. So I volunteered for them for a while, used the press to make my own work, and one thing led to another. They, they wanted me to teach an Italian class, then they wanted me to print something for them, and um, so very soon I found myself being having a printer role, although that's something I was never really trained for. Uh, so I juggled for a while a two-day job at the print shop, my own artistic practice, and other jobs that I did for it. Um, 
until the then director left, and there was a void, and of course, when you run a nonprofit, somebody has to write grant proposals, somebody has to 